Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel, Accounts Guru Cool, Learn Accounting Online. So today we are here to discuss about accounts people, technical interview questions with expected or probable answers for that. So we are going to discuss about what are all the technical questions are going to be asked when the accounts people interview is there and how you have to do the answer for that. Considering here, we have added the few examples what we are going to discuss from the question standpoint. That's going to be, how do you ensure accuracy in processing invoices and payments? That question is going to be some technical questions when it's going when you are giving the interview towards the accounts payable. And if it's related to the accounts payable, then this, these sort of questions are going to be expected when interviewer is going to ask to you. Can you explain the three-way match process in accounts payable? How do you handle discrepancies between purchase order, invoices, and receipts? Describe the accounts payable process from start to finish. How do you handle vendor inquiries and resolve the payment issues? So this is just a few examples what we are going to discuss. So we have the multiple questions here for all of our viewers to know that what sort of questions are going to be there and how you have to give the answer for that. So considering we are here to know more about the technical interview questions with expected answers related to accounts payable. So request viewers to be with us till the end of this to know how you are going to give the answer for that. So request viewers to like, share and subscribe our channel to get the more knowledge related to accounting and finance. In addition to that, if you are looking for any sort of training related to accounts payable or its accounts receivable or reporting, that's going to be converted into R2R, P2P, O2C. In addition to that, FVNA, if you are looking for any software training as well, in addition to that, if you need any sort of consultancy related to accounting and finance or related to your career guidance, and if you want to do something outsource of your, of your work related to accounting and finance, then you can connect with us on our email ID, accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com. So here we are going to discuss about the accounts payable technical interview questions. And the first question is going to be, describe the difference between a company's billing and non-billable expenses. Now, this question is going to become when you are going to give any accounts payable interview to know that either you have the understanding what's, what's the difference between the billable and non-billable expenses what's mean by billing and non-billing expenses. So that's going to be the billing expenses are the cost incurred by a company for goods sold or services rendered to its customers or client. So the difference between billable and non-billable expenses are that when you are going to talk about the billable expenses, the billable expenses which are related to the uh, render the services or deliver or sold the goods. These expenses you have to consider as billable expenses. And other than that, these expenses are typically directly related to the company's core revenue generating activities like sales commission, shipping charges on customer orders or direct labor cost for project based services. Non-billable expenses are costs that cannot be directly charged or passed on to customers or clients. These expenses are essential for the company's operations but are not directly linked to revenue generations. That's going to be meaning of non-billable expenses. The billable expenses are those expenses which are going to be directly related to your rendering the services or goods sold. Other than that, there are certain expenses which you have to do. That's all operational expenses and that's not going to be considered as a billable. So you have to consider that expenses as a non-billable expenses. Non-billable expenses encompass 
atoms like rent, utilities, office supplies, salaries of support staff, and administrative cost, these expenses are considered part of a company's overhead or operating expenses and are not directly recoverable from customers. So that's going to be considered as non-billable expenses. Next is, how do you calculate liabilities on a financial statement? To calculate liabilities on a financial statement, you sum up all the obligations or debts owed by the company to external parties. This includes both short, short term and long term liabilities. Here is a general formula to calculate total liabilities. That's going to be current liabilities plus non current. That's a long term liability. Considering these both two is going to be calculate the total liabilities. Liabilities, current liabilities are obligations that the company must settle within one year or the normal operating cycle, whichever is longer. They include accounts payable, short-term loans, accrued expenses, and other short-term debts. Non-current, that's the long-term liabilities are obligations that are due beyond one year or the normal operating cycle like long-term loans, bonds, payable deferred tax liabilities. That's going to be the, give the example of the non-current, that's a long-term liabilities. Next is going to be name all components of an invoice. An invoice typically includes the following components. First, invoice header. This contains the supplier's name, contact information, invoice number, and invoice date. Billing and shipping information. This includes the company's name, contact details, and shipping address if different from the billing address. Atomized list of products or services, a detailed breakdown of the goods or services provided, including the quantity, unit price, and total amount for each atom. Subtotal, the sum of all the atom amounts before any taxes or discounts are applied. Name all components of the invoices in continuation to that taxes. The applicable taxes such as GST, CGST, SGST, IGST are separately itemized if relevant. Discounts, any applicable discounts such as early payment discounts, return merchandise discounts or volume discounts. Shipping and handling, additional charges for shipping, handling or delivery if applicable. Total amount due, the final amount that the company needs to pay including all charges and deductions. In continuation to that, payment terms, the agreed upon terms for payment, including the due date and any early payment discount options, term and conditions, any specific terms, conditions, or additional notes related to the invoice or the transaction. What are the types of assets in company? Companies have various types of assets on the balance sheet. Some common category of asset includes current assets, non-current assets, fixed assets, intangible assets, and investments. Even though this is related to the assets, but still you are going to do the entries related to the all these aspects. So you should aware about that. What are all the types of assets in a company? Prepared expenses, cash and cash equivalent. Now, how do you ensure accuracy in processing invoices and payments? That's important. Ensuring accuracy in processing invoices and payments is essential to maintain the company's financial integrity. To achieve this, I follow a well-defined process where I verify invoices by carefully matching each invoice with the corresponding purchase order and receiving documents, ensuring that the quantities, price, and the terms are consistent. So when you are going to join the accounts payable, then when you are processing the invoices before that, it's important to know how you are going to ensure the accuracy when you are processing invoices and payments. So you have to match with the corresponding invoice with the purchase order, receiving document, ensuring the quantities, price, and the terms all are consistent. And that's in line with purchase order. 
Then I follow approval procedures and make sure they go through the necessary channels before processing. This step helps prevent unauthorized or duplicate payments. In continuation to that, I accurately record that data into the accounting system, double checking the information to avoid errors, regular reconciliations of accounts, payable balances with vendor statement and general ledger accounts helps identify and resolve discrepancies promptly. In the end, I implemented strong payment controls such as requiring 12 authorizations for large payments or verifying vendor bank details to prevent fraudulent activities. So you have to give the answers in that way when the question going to comes to how do you ensure accuracy in processing invoices and payments. Can you explain the three-way match process in accounts payable? This is the mostly asked the interview questions related to accounts payable. What's mean by three-way match process in accounts payable? The three-way match process in accounts payable is a crucial step to ensure the accuracy of payments. It involves comparing three key documents before approving an invoice for payments. That's purchase order, the POE generated by the company when ordering goods or services, from a vendor, it contains details such as item descriptions, quantities, price, and agreed upon the term. So when the three-way match process is going to come into the picture, so related to that, you have to match the three documents, three-way. So you have to consider three processes. One, you have to match with the purchase orders. What you have uh, generated from your end when ordering something, so you have to match your purchase orders with received the invoice so receiving report is a second when the company receives the order goods or services a receiving report is created it verifies that the items were received in the correct quantity and conditions that's the grn and next is invoice the vendor sends an invoice for the delivery delivered goods or services the accounts payable team matches the invoice with the corresponding po and receive reports to verify that the billing details are accurate. So the three-way match concept is going to come into the pictures for the three sets of different criteria. That's the first is going to be your purchase order. Second is GRN, that's a goods received note. And third is going to be invoice. So you have to ensure everything is in line before going to process the invoice. Can you explain the three-way match process in accounts payable? The three-way match ensures that the company is only paying for the goods or services that were received and agreed upon preventing overpayments and potential fraudulent activities. If any discrepancies are found, they must be resolved before the invoice can be processed for payment. These practice helps me contribute efficiently, reducing errors and optimizing cash flow management for the company. How do you handle discrepancies between purchase order invoices and receipts when you are going to talk about the three-way match and when you are doing that and if any discrepancies arise, how you are going to handle being you are going to give the interview for accounts payable. So such kind of technical questions are going to be there to know how, how you are going to handle any critical situations, discrepancies to ensure that you are going to do on-time payment to your supplier. Handling discrepancies between the purchase orders, invoices, and receipts requires a, syst a systematic approach to ensure accurate payments and vendor relationships. When such discrepancies arise, I thoroughly investigate the root cause of the discrepancies by comparing the information on the purchase order, invoice, and receiving orders. I just recollect the word that's the RCA that's going to be root cause analysis. When I was there in a Fortune 500, so taking care of the accounts payable department as well. And uh, yeah, such kind of lots of issues are there related to the three way match. And when we used to follow the three way match, then the GRN is incorrect, your purchase order is different, your invoice is different, your GRN is different. So everything is going to be in a different ways and the discrepancies are there. Then we have to go into the depth, investigate the investigate the root cause, that's the RCA, and then 
we have to take the appropriate actions for that. Giving one example is that if your purchase order is approved, then whatever the purchase order is there, when you are going to do the GRM based on the purchase orders, and if the whatever is there in the purchase orders, that same per unit price is going to be reflect in the GRN when you are going to do the GRN. But if the person who is doing the GRN, he incorrectly mentioned the quantity what's in, in, in the GRN instead of what's there on the invoice, then your GRN is going to be incorrect. If you receive the 10 quantities in purchase order, if you have the 15 quantity and if you receive the partial invoice, and you, are, you have done the GRN for 11 quantities or nine quantities, nine, then that's not going to be matched with your invoice. Your purchase order is going to be open. That whatever quantity you have updated, that's exhausted. And the remaining one is going to be open, but the price is not going to be matched with your invoice. Per unit is going to be matched, but the total is not going to be matched with your invoice. And if your invoice is incorrect, the purchase price per unit on the invoice is not as per the your purchase orders. Then your GRN was prepared based on the purchase order versus your invoice are not going to be in line. So you have to re-approach to your respective buyer related to that purchase order. You have to ask to him, hey, look, we have received the invoice with the higher price, but your purchase order with the lower price. Do let me know if there is any amendment or we have to approach for the vendor to have the invoice as per the purchase order. And if it's a GRN is incorrect, we have to ask the GRN team to do the RTV return to vendor and uh, get the new GRN done in the systems, which are going to be in line with the purchase order invoice and GRN. So it's going to be, this may involve reaching out to the respective departments. That's the purchase team, buyer team, involved in the procurement process, I communicate promptly with the vendor to discuss the discrepancies and gather any additional information needed to resolve the issues. Based on the investigations and communications, I work to resolve the discrepancy. This may involve issuing debit or credit memo, updating the purchase order or invoice, or adjusting the payment amount accordingly. Before proceeding with any adjustments, I ensure that all necessary Approvals are obtained from relevant stakeholders, such as the purchasing department or management. I also maintain comprehensive documentation of the discrepancy and the steps taken to resolve it for future reference and audit purpose. So that's going to be the how you're going to handle the discrepancies between purchase orders, invoices, and receipts. Describe the accounts payable process from start to finish. The accounts payable process typically involves the following step, invoice receipt. The process begins with the receipt of an invoice from the vendor for goods or service rendered. Invoice verifications, the received invoice is verified for accuracy, comparing it with the corresponding purchase order and receiving report in the three-way match process. Approval, the invoice undergoes the necessary approval process, ensuring that it meets company policies and pro procedures before proceeding for payment. Next is going to be data entry. The approved invoice detail are entered into the accounting system for recording and tracking. Payment schedule. The invoice is added to the payment schedule considering vendor payment terms, early payment discounts, and cash flow availability. Payment processing. The invoice is processed for payment on the schedule date, either through manual check, issuance or electronic payment method. In addition to that, payment reconciliations. After the payment is made, the accounts payable team reconciles the payment with vendor statement and ensure the invoice is marked as paid. Vendor relationship management. Throughout the process, the accounts payable team maintains positive vendor relationship by addressing inquiries and resolving payment related issues promptly. How do you handle vendor inquiries and resolve payment issues? Effective vendor communication is essential in managing accounts payable. When dealing with vendor inquiries and payment issues, I respond to vendor inquiries in a timely manner, 
acknowledging their concerns and providing clear communications, I gather all relevant information about the inquiry of payment issues, including invoice numbers, payment dates, and any supporting documentations. I investigate the issues internally to understand the root cause, whether it is payment delay, incorrect payment amount, or any other problem. In continuation to that, if necessary, I internally collaborate with other departments such as purchasing or receiving to resolve the issues effectively. Based on the investigations, I propose a solutions to the vendor that address the problem and ensures accurate and timely resolutions. I also make it a point to follow up with the vendor after implementing the solutions to ensure their satisfactions and that the issues has been adequately resolved. Throughout the process, I maintain detailed records of the inquiry and the steps taken to resolve it for future reference. What strategies do you use to optimize the payment cycle and take advantage of early payment discount? Optimizing the payment cycle and capitalizing on early payment discount are essential for improving cash flow and reducing overall expenses. To achieve this, I employ the following strategy. Payment schedule. I create a well-planned payment schedule that align with vendor payment terms and company cash flow projections. This allows for timely payments without sacrificing the opportunity to take advantage of early payment discounts. The most of the entities, uh, when it's going to be the large vendors, they used to have the uh, different payment terms. That's going to be early payment terms. If you're going to do within the 15 days, initially agreed payment terms, that's 90 days. But if you are going to do uh, within the 15 days itself, then that's going to be how uh, some 3%, uh, 6% per annum discount is going to be there. And if you're going to do it more than 30 days, then there are some portion of discount is going to be there. If you're going to do on 60 days, some portion of interest is uh, discount is going to be there. So the early payment discount is a term and it's depend upon the acceptance of the vendors and if you're willing to provide to your vendors. Vendor negotiations. I proactively negotiate favorable payment terms with vendors aiming for longer payment periods or discounts for early payments. Building strong vendor relationship can provide opportunities for such negotiations. Automated process. I leverage accounting softwares and automations to streamline the payment process, ensuring payments are made on time and early payment discount opportunities are not missed. Monitoring and alerts. I set up monitoring systems and alerts to notify me of upcoming payments, due date, and potential early payment discount deadlines. Discount analysis. I regularly analyze the potential savings from early payment discounts and compare them to the cost of financings or alternative use of fund to make informed decisions. So when you are going to avail the early payment discount, you have to re-ensure that if you are if you have the sufficient money and if you are going to put into the FD or some any other platforms, then how much interest you are going to be on and how much you are going to have the early payment discounts. Or if you are the financing or if you have any loan from uh, OD or something like that, then how much is interest is applicable on that. So considering you need to take a decisions, either the early discount payment is going to be uh, helpful for you or not. And if it's there, then only you have to take that decision. Else, you have to go the go with the payment on the due date. How do you maintain compliances with tax regulations and vendor payment terms? To maintain compliance with tax regulations and vendor payment terms, I stay up to date with the changes in tax regulations, ensuring that all tax-related information on invoice is accurate and the appropriate taxes are withheld and remitted to the relevant tax authorities. I carefully review vendor contracts to understand their payment terms, discounts, and penalties for late payments, ensuring 
adherence to agreed upon terms and set up payment reminders and alerts to avoid missing payment due dates, preventing late payments and potential penalties. So you have to up to date from the tax standpoint to ensure all the accurate information is going to be captured over the invoice. In continuation to that, if there are many challenges in adhering to payment terms, I rely on proactive vendor communications, seeking extensions or negotiating alternative arrangements to maintain positive relationship. I also maintain through documentations of all payment transactions, vendor contracts and tax related records to ensure compliance and facilitate audits. What methods do you use to prevent duplicate payments? Very essential. Preventing duplicate payment is critical to avoid financial losses and maintaining accurate financial records. To prevent duplicate payments, I carefully verify all invoices using the three-way match process to ensure that only valid and authorized invoices are processed for payment. I encourage vendors to use unique invoice numbering for each transactions, making it easier to identify and avoid duplicates. I set up system controls within the accounting system to flag potential duplicate invoices and I regularly maintain and review the vendor master data, ensuring that duplicate vendors are not created inadvertently and accurate vendor information is maintained. So it's a too much complicated to ensure the duplicate payment or prevent the duplicate payment. So the invoice number, the system is going to be uh, not allow you to use the same invoice number when you are processing the invoices. So that's going to be the one controls. But in addition to that, you have to set up the multiple options in the systems, which are going to be, if you are doing any payment uh, for the same amount, system should give the alert. This is a, this such kind of payments has already been issued against these, these, these invoices. If anything is going to be the incorrect, then you have to go into the depth and to ensure that you, the such kind of issues are not there. What methods do you use to prevent duplicate payment? So in continuation to that, if there is any uncertainty about the invoices, authenticity or duplications, I communicate with the vendor promptly. Finally, I conduct periodic audit of payment transactions. That's going to be transactions to identify and rectify any duplicate payments that might have occurred in 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 addition to that next is going to be can you explain the concept of aging in accounts payable and how it impact cash flow management an accounts payable aging refers to the classifications of outstanding invoices based on their due dates in categorize invoices into different time buckets, typically 30, 60, 90 or more days past the invoices date, the aging report helps track the payment status of invoices and provide insight into the company's outstanding liabilities. The aging report is a valuable tool for cash flow management because it allows the companies to Identify delay by analyzing the aging report, helping the company find invoices that are overdue or nearing their due dates. This helps ensure timely payments and maintain positive relationships. Manage discounts by identifying invoices eligible for early payment discounts. By taking advantage of these discounts, the company can optimize cash flow and reduce overall expenses. In addition to that, focus cash flow by providing the clear pictures of the company's short-term liabilities, allowing for more accurate cash flow projections and better financial planning. Prioritize payment by categorizing invoices based on their due date, ensuring that critical suppliers, suppliers are paid on time. Assess vendor performance by helping evaluate vendor performance based on their payment terms and timelines, which can influence future purchasing decisions. So can you explain the concept of aging in accounts paper and how it impact cash flow management? So the aging is going to be more helpful to the cash flow management to know that what are all the OD invoices are there, any reason for which we hold for that. 
or why we are not going to do the payments on the time and when it's going to be the due. That's all we are able to know and how we have to be uh, consider that for the cash flow because that's cash is going to be outflow and we have to know that how much is cash is going to be required to manage the our outflow. How do we prevent and detect fraudulent activities in the accounts payable process? Preventing and det detecting fraudulent activities in the accounts payable process is crucial to safeguard the company's assets and financial reputations. To address this, I implement the following measures. Segregation of duties. I ensure that no single individual handle all aspects of the payment process. This includes separating responsibilities for invoice processing, payment approvals, and bank reconciliations. If you have the multiple vendors and to avoid the fraudulent activities, then how you're going to maintain that, how you're going to ensure that's not going to be detected any fraudulent activities, then you have to segregate the duties. The invoice processing team is different, payment team is different, and the bank reconciliation team is going to be the different. In addition to that, invoice verifications, I rigorously verify invoices through the three-way match process, confirming the accuracy of vendor informations, atom details, and payment terms. Vendor validations, I perform due diligence in verifying the legitimacy of new vendors to prevent setting of fraudulent entities in the system. Payment controls, I establish trend stringent payment controls such as requiring 12 authorizations for large payment or implementing positive pay to prevent unauthorized checks from clearing. Regular audits, I conduct periodic audits of the accounts payable process to identify any anomalies or suspicious activities. Employee training, I provide ongoing training to employees about fraud awareness emphasize the importance of reporting and unusual activities they encounter. Data security, I implement strong data security measures to protect sensitive financial information and prevent unauthorized access. By combining preventing controls, employee awareness and regular monitoring, I contribute to a secure accounts payable process and mitigate the risk of fraudulent activities. How do you manage vendor relationship and negotiate favorable payment terms? To manage vendor relationships and negotiate favorable payment terms, I depend on practices like establishing open and transparent communication channels with vendors, addressing their concerns promptly, and maintaining a positive working relationship. I also try to make timely payments to build trust and credibility with vendors, I actively seek opportunities to take advantage of early payment discounts offered by vendors, which can lead to cost saving for the company. If possible, I negotiate volume discounts with vendors based on the company's purchasing volume, contributing to overall cost saving. In continuation to that, periodically, I review vendor performance and payment history, considering factors such as reliability, product, service quality, and responsiveness, I focus time to identify areas for process improvements like streamlining invoicing or adopting electronic payment methods. So that's going to be related to the accounts payable technical interview questions. And here we discuss the 15 accounts payable technical interview questions with answers, how you have to give the answer for that. Thanks guys for being with us till the end of this. Request viewers to like, share and subscribe our channel to get the more knowledge about accounting and finance. In addition to that, if you're looking for any sort of consultancy related to accounting and finance, you can connect with us on our email ID accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com or if you're looking for any sort of training related to the account related to the P2P, O2C, R2R, FPNA or any software training, then you can connect with us on our email id accounts.gurukul at the rate yahoo.com. Thank you.